Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled You Can't Just Walk In Here. As an IT person I've worked for a couple of companies helping with their projects. Most of them required a formal dress code when you might have customer interaction. Not the IT department I had to work with, but their customers. Even when I could encounter them, I got an exception of this dress code and would wear a normal looking jean and a plain one colored shirt. When I started a new project, they told me to take the elevator to their floor and look for room number X to meet my supervisor and get everything I need to get started. Of course, I used my normal outfit and didn't have an ID card or anything to identify myself. As luck would have it, I encountered an overcautious employee that would not believe me when I tried to explain that this was my first day. I should have gotten my ID before the start date as any other employee. And why would I walk around in such casual attire when I work in such an important company with lots of customer interaction? He wouldn't listen to anything I had to say and wanted me escorted out the building. It was this moment I got a call from my supervisor about being late. I told him what was happening, and he came to my rescue. Only thing I said to the other employee, see? I do work here. The next story is titled Canadian Karen. I work for a very popular Canadian cafe, bakery chain. We have a rewards program that you can use through the app. You collect points to get free items. You can also use the app to redeem special offers on our products. This is the interaction I had with a customer almost a year ago. Karen. Can I get a farmer's breakfast wrap and a medium coffee? Me confirming the order, so that's one breakfast farmer's wrap with a medium coffee. Karen. Yes. Me. Do you have a rewards card? Karen her scans card, I tell her the price and she pays. She received her order and immediately starts to complain. Karen. Where is my second wrap? Me. Ma'am you only ordered one wrap and one coffee. Karen. No, I ordered two. I scanned my card. I had a two for one deal. I should have got two. Me. Ma'am you didn't mention you wanted to use the two for one offer. Karen. But I scanned my card. Who else would I have scanned my card if I didn't want to use the offer? Me. To collect points for free items. Karen. I don't want to collect points I want the two for one deal like I ordered. Me. You didn't say two you said one. When you ordered you said you wanted one wrap and a coffee. Karen. I didn't say I wanted one wrap I said I wanted a wrap. Eventually after trying to explain to her what she ordered, I refunded her money. Punched in the two wraps she wanted, scanned her card and had her pay the two for one price. She took her other wrap and walked away. The next story is titled Lady I work at a different store. So I was at Target yesterday, on my day off from the grocery store. And this lady comes up to me asking where the automotive aisle is. I wasn't wearing anything that a Target employee would be wearing and I don't know why she would be asking me but I politely said, I am sorry, I don't know where it is. I don't work here but I think I saw an employee in the other aisle. This lady straight up told me that she isnt stupid and that she knows I don't work there. And that I work at the grocery store down the street. I looked at her like she was insane and didn't say anything so she continues on saying how I work at a DTORE and all stores are basically the same and I should know where the automotive aisle is. I told her that I don't actually know where anything is and that she should find an employee because I don't want to deal with her. She then name drops my manager and tells me that she will be talking to him when she is in the store next, I said fuck that let's do it now. I will call his ass and we can do it right now together. She called me rude and unhelpful and I was the worst employee she has ever dealt with. I told her to fuck off. I proceeded to tell my boss via text and he laughed and said don't call him for stupid shit. The next story is titled neighbor phones police because mill is parked across the road from their driveway. So, this literally just happened. For some background, I live in a council estate in the UK. If you've ever been in one then you'll know we're all jammed in here like sardines especially when it comes to parking with most of it being roadside. They're not bad places to live, but if you have more than one car chances or you'll be parking it on the roof. Anyway, we have a mix of bought houses among us mere commoners. One such fancy pants lives across the road and a couple of houses up, complete with their own two-car driveway. Posh, I know. 
Well, me and my partner have recently had a baby so my mill has been coming by a lot more for visits as you can imagine. Usually, she parks outside our home on the road like we do. But as we're not kings of the road, sometimes those spaces aren't available. So, she parked partially across the road from the aforementioned fuckwits driveway. This is in no way illegal and pretty much every house in our street with a drive has a car parked across the road with no issues. Not these folks, oh my lordy. We've had several notes left on her car with passive-aggressive messages such as, we will try not to hit your car, and, if you have no road awareness you probably don't know that what you're doing is illegal so I suggest you move now, always signed, your fed up neighbors. We've tried to explain to them that it's not illegal to park across the road and also that if they simply just came to the door and asked we would move as soon as it was possible. But nah, they started petty. So the saga continued. Well, milady of the driveway came to my home, banging on the door like the police with an arrest warrant. Scared the pants off our little girl, who I had to then take to the door screaming her pants off, only to be comforted by more screaming from our friendly neighborhood correspondents. My mill was not having it and came to the door to tell her to do one because of her attitude, stating that she could have just asked nicely instead of yelling at a mum and her baby who have nothing to do with it. This resulted in a tirade of threats from ye old t watt bags. Long story short, she screamed that she was phoning the police and we would be fined or arrested for parking on her property. Someone should have probably told them that their property barrier doesn't include public roads opposite the property. I can't wait for the police to get here and see that parking across her drive actually meant being parked at the opposite side of the road. So fellow road users, according to our charming neighbors about half of the UK population better move their cars before the popo come and get ya. The next story is titled Party Time. Who doesn't love tacos? I was invited to my college roommate So's, Sarah's, grad party. Sarah was a theater, dance major. This was in her predominantly white neighborhood, hometown, and I am part Mexican and look Mexican. It was a bit of drive for me, 1.5 hours, and on my way in I give my friend a call. Hey Ken, I am pretty close, do you guys need anything from the store? Food, drinks, or anything. Ken, no we are all good, just get over here so we can start drinking. I grab a bottle of wine and head over about 10 minutes after the start time. As I arrive, I see my friend is bringing in a sound system from his truck, so naturally I grab a big speaker and walk into the backyard to help set up. As I walk in, it is only white people, totally fine, just something I notice as I'm trying to find any familiar faces. I set down the speaker on the deck in the backyard, I'm handed a beer and I'm going back out to help with any more equipment. This is when Sarah's mom approaches me, looks just like her. And here we go. Sarah's mom. OMG, where have you been? You're late, we have been waiting for you. My impression, oh this lady is hilarious, I'm nobody in regards to this party. Maybe this is her eccentric way of welcoming her guests. Note, my friend is setting up his sound system out of earshot. YYF8. Beer in hand yeah, I hit a little traffic on the way, but it wasn't too bad. I'm glad I made it, your backyard is beautiful and the setup looks really nice. Sarah's mom looks concerned and a little upset. Well, did you bring the food? YYF8. Laughs I called Ken, he said you didn't need anything? I'd be happy to go back, what can I get? Sarah's mom. Did you bring your taco cart? Are you going to make the food in the kitchen? This somewhat strikes a nerve, I'm just trying to help. I'm also thinking wow this lady is unabashedly laying into me upon introduction, I respect that. A light racist joke before introduction, that's a bold move. She's hilarious, I'll play along, let's throw some punches. YYF8. Geez uh, sarcastically my card is in the shop. Sarah's mom. Well what are you going to do? YYF8. I'm sure I have some cousins close by that can bring theirs and get some tacos going, maybe some churros y horchata. Shoot. Maybe we can even bring in some of those big hats. What do you think? Sips drink and laughs. Sarah's mom is visibly upset and still sticking to this entertaining scenario we've created. This is so unprofessional. How do you show up empty-handed to this party, and just stand there with a beer? YYF8. Yeah how dare I. Takes a sip of the beer and laughs really should have brought my backup taco cart. Sarah's mom still not ready to break character looks more upset. I think to myself this must be where Sarah gets her theater from. Sarah walks over, finally someone I know. She gives me a big hug, sees her mom's frustration and says, Oh, 
Was my mom telling you that the taco cart hasn't come yet? Sarah's mom's jaw about hits the floor. OMG, you are YYF8, Ken's roommate? I am so sorry, I assumed because you were carrying things in, and I'm so embarrassed. I'm cracking up at this point, Sarah is cracking up. YYF8. Phew, I'm really a terrible a cook, so it's good thing Sarah came along, I was ready to get the food for this party in fact hold on I'll be right back. I return presenting the bottle of wine just to add a little salt. Sarcastically sorry I was so late, and forgot the food. I hope I am still welcome or I can just cut grass and head out. She apologized again, and I assured her I was not offended in the slightest and helped to decide what to do about the food, and help call a few places. They ordered pizza at this point. Turns out the vendor's truck, Pedro's, broke down on the side of the on the freeway and they were not going to make it. I can't just let a joke go, so I throw in. Ah you guys went with Pedro's, Tia needs to straighten that boy out, he is always late to the family fiestas. I got a few more jabs in throughout the night. Ken, got a few good ones in and Sarah's mom played along she was actually really nice and there were no hard feelings, just under stress because the vendor didn't show up. The next story is titled I don't have keys for a store I don't work at. My workplace is a small boutique style pet food, self-wash, grooming salon. I'm the groomer. I show up at 8 o'clock for early morning appointments and we open at 10 o'clock. Next door is a general dollar, and the management must be the worst because they are constantly having issues keeping staff and staying open. When this story took place, last year, the manager wasn't showing up on time, and when I'd come to unlock my shop, I'd see the DG workers waiting outside, especially in the snow, and I started a good rapport with them as I'd let them come into my store and warm up if they needed to while waiting for their perpetually late manager. One morning, I showed up to more than the usual number of people milling around the parking lot. I generally get to work at 7.45, so seeing anyone other than DG workers is unusual. As I was grabbing some equipment from my car, a man said to me, oh they've been waiting for you. This was surprising to me, but not unheard of. Sometimes my early grooming appointments are super early because of work or school drop-offs, which is why I take appointments at that time in the first place. As if to punctuate this idea, I saw a regular and his two dogs wandering around a grassy area taking care of business. I greeted my clients, exchanged a typical southern greeting, Hey girl. How ya doin'? Oh it's doing ya keepin' warm? I'm tryin'. Have a good day. You too. With the DG workers I knew by sight, and opened the shop. A few hours later, the owner, my boss, walked into the grooming room with her, I hate people, look on her face. I got a complaint about you, anti-social. My blood ran cold. Me? What? Why? She shook her head a few times laughing. You didn't unlock the general dollar this morning when you unlocked our door. I attempted to reconcile this idea with reality. I failed spectacularly. Huh? This guy called to complain about you. You unlocked our door, but didn't even try to unlock next door. I stared at my boss, fish mouthing until the dog I was grooming tried to stick his head inside it. That was when my brain caught up with what was happening. Yeah, I didn't unlock the Chinese restaurant on the other side of us either, guess I'm just slacking today. My boss went on to tell me that she pointed out to the gentleman that I do not work at the General of Dollars, and that my key wouldn't have fit the lock. Apparently the gentleman firmly believed that I should have tried. My boss advised him to call DG to complain, and this was where she lost it and started cracking up and his response was to say that I worked at the pet shop, not DG, so he was calling her. She said, well, I don't know what you think I can do, sir, and hung up. The next story is titled One of Those Faces. I don't know if I just look friendly and helpful, but before I had kids, I used to get stopped for assistance all time when I was shopping. Now my tiny minions keep people at bay. Once I was with my husband at Walmart. I was wearing navy scrubs. He was wearing a blue polo shirt and khakis. We were at opposite ends of the aisle. But a couple walked past him to ask me where we kept the paper towels. There was another time when I got stopped in the back of the store wearing my winter coat. My favorite was the time it happened at bed, bath, and beyond. An older lady stopped and asked me where the clocks were. In her defense, I was wearing a purple sweater and khaki pants, so you could have slapped a name tag on me, and no one would have known the difference. So, I chose kindness and told her I thought they were in the back right corner, but I wasn't sure because I don't work there. Instead of, oh, sorry, thanks anyway, or something to that effect, this lady replied with an angry, well. 
you look like you do. The next story is titled Situational Awareness Just Isn't In Some Folks Wheelhouse. Today I was waiting to pick up a to-go order in a t-shirt, Daisy Dukes, flip-flops, and sunglasses on top of my head. Clearly not an employee. This lady walked in and said to me, table for four. I smiled and told her, I don't work here. Table for four, she said to me, a little louder. I do not work here, I said a little louder, gesturing to the podium behind which the employees stand. She looked at me like it was my fault she wasn't being helped and I just ignored her. It annoyed me because here's white, middle-aged proof that there really are people out there who assume others are simply there to serve them. Also, it was a little disturbing that she was so situationally unaware. Like it happens, we all have sleepy, confusing, exhausting days. But if you go to a restaurant where you see the employee's toes you are actually in a strip club. The next story is titled Because we sell firewood, we are responsible for trees blocking the road? We live on a road leading to two very large campgrounds, and across the road from a major state park. It's the 4th of July weekend, and cool at night, so wood sales are great. There are woods in between the houses on this road. My son sells firewood to the campers. He was helping someone load the firewood into their trunk when a woman stops a car on the road and yells at him that there's a tree across the road in the direction she had just come from. He asked her why she was telling him this. She told him go fix it. He looked at her, said, sure, after I help this customer. She drove off and he restacked the wood rack for the next customer and came back to the house laughing his butt off. Like he was responsible for removing the tree just be because he was selling firewood. The next story is titled I work at a tech store apparently. Today my dad and I went to a certain tech store whose employees wear a blue polo. No, I need to emphasize this, I am wearing a gray shirt and gray shorts, my dad is wearing a black and white shirt. We look nothing like staff, like at all. So, we are waiting in a line for a representative and finally it's our turn. As the man is busy doing his thing with our tech then suddenly, a guy comes around the corner. The man tries a few times to get our attention, he manages to get mine. Once he did, he asks us both if we work there, I immediately look down at my shirt once he asks. Surprisingly I didn't have a blue shirt on, or black, or anything that looks like staff. So why he asked me, and my dad is beyond me. He then after we told him we didn't work here he proceeded to go up to the gentleman that was helping us and asked if he worked there and if he could help him. He got ignored and walked away. If you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel and post some bare